Well, we're out here at the West Portal Playground Rec Center. I uh, just had my open door morning, not my entire open door day. We're going to be out in the Excelsior uh, in just a little bit. Uh, this is an opportunity for people to come in, those 15 or so minute meetings that people go online. We did this a few weeks back in the Mission and the Tenderloin, and I'll be doing a number of these type of open door days out in the community over the course of the next few months and encourage people just call 311 learn more about the open door days and love the chance to meet with you and dialogue uh, more directly with you out of city hall uh, today was uh, not surprising but very diverse uh, in terms of the topics and items that we focused on from pension reforms to the concern that we have too many middle managers in city government to the concern about the quality of our soccer fields uh, in the city, controversies around these smart meters that are going to be put in by PG&E, someone uh, arguing that we should have an opt out and not be forced to have these smart meters. Others that I've heard from that say absolutely smart meters are the future and we need to support it. Uh, concerns, of course, large and small about budget uh, and issues of condo conversion, tenancy in common uh, that came up today uh, as just examples. Neighborhood centers and the importance of those. Uh, all again, examples of the discussion and dialogue we had this morning. Uh, but again, I want to encourage those of you that want to take advantage of a little bit uh, more of a one-on-one -on -one uh, dialogue to call through on one and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon uh, as we get out uh, into other parts of our city for these open door days. Just quickly, uh, this week was a, I think a pretty extraordinary week from my perspective, exhilarating I would argue, uh, because, uh, well, exhilarating for those that love uh, the public policy behind these issues, but we had two profoundly significant events. Uh, one was out at the Sunset Reservoir. Uh, where we're putting 24,000 solar panels, literally 24,000 solar panels on the equivalent of 12 football fields out there on top of the reservoir. It's the largest municipal uh, solar project uh, in the state of California, arguably the country. We haven't been able to find any bigger in the United States, but certainly the biggest municipal solar project in the state of California. Uh, this will triple the number of megawatts that the city produces and again reinforce our leadership in terms of environmental stewardship and notably our leadership on solar generation and our solar capacity. Uh, this was a, a power purchasing agreement that we put together that is not only generating energy but it's creating jobs and one of the really wonderful things that I noted out there was the there were the people that were already on site working. They put about 5,000 panels up already uh, coming through our workforce training programs, through our city build program and our green academy programs. Um, just proving the paradigm that you can advance an aggressive environmental framework and be an environmental steward. At the same time, you're creating economic development and creating uh, an economic paradigm where you're putting people to work and creating jobs. So that was a very significant milestone, the success there. I want to thank again Supervisor Eric Marr for his leadership, uh, Supervisor Carmen Chu for her leadership. We're both there with us uh, for helping make that happen. And the other very significant uh, milestone was reached up at West Point and Middle Point, up in Hunter's View and Bayview Hunter's Point, where we had the privilege of being with well, roughly 100 community leaders and members, uh, groundbreaking, in this case, uh, the uh, effort to tear down the old uh, housing uh, sites up there that the Housing Authority built in 1956. Uh, this is coming sort of post-World War II, our returning GIs, and here we were creating this public housing that had no context to the surrounding communities. And the idea now is through Hope SF, a local Hope 6, to revitalize uh, this community, particularly beginning in Hunter's View, by rebuilding housing on site without displacing people, one-to-one -one replacement of affordable housing with mixed income housing to do a much more dynamic job of including this project and production of housing units in the context of the surrounding communities to right some wrongs of the past. And uh, this is something that we've worked on for almost five and a half, six years. John Stewart Company and others, Ridgepoint nonprofit developers and others that are part of this uh, program. And I, I just couldn't be more proud. Supervisor Maxwell and all our hard work on this, getting the Board of Supervisors to agree to a $95 million down payment uh, on rebuilding not just Hunter's View, but seven other housing authority projects. We'll be out at Sunnydale next. We'll be out at Potrero. 
uh, West Side Courts eventually take care of all our local public housing units that have not been revitalized over the last few decades. No city in the United States is doing more in terms of making a local investment than San Francisco. Progress, Supervisor Maxwell, I know how proud you are today as well. Thank you for everything you have done. Speaker Pelosi, Supervisor Dufty, the whole team, job well done. And Henry Alvarez, it is a new day at the Housing Authority in San Francisco. Thank you all. I want to thank Speaker Pelosi for helping us get some congressionally directed appropriations uh, to come to the city. The federal stimulus program that generates six of the seven million dollars that the redevelopment agency is participating or providing in this uh, project. And the money that came from the state, 40 million dollars through the Prop 1C, this uh, state bond. So you wonder what we support at the ballot, state bond on this, this, all these things coming together. Federal stimulus, putting people to work almost half of all the jobs from residents from the community in terms of the deconstruction of the project and by this time next year they'll be starting to actually build once the infrastructure is done they'll start be building actual units uh, on the site get ready two three yeah there you go well done so those were two exciting projects that happened this week that I'm particularly proud of and one that I will just preview for next week and that's the launch of our green finance program. $150 million that we're putting up to allow people to weatherize their homes, to do water conservation, energy efficiency programs, to put solar on their roofs, even consider an urban wind uh, uh, generator on their property. We'll finance all of the costs up front and on Monday night next week uh, we're going to be doing online town hall meeting to explain to people how they can actually take advantage of this financing and how they can lead by example in this case l-e-a-d not just l-e-e-d uh, as they provide for again a stronger framework uh, to advance our environmental uh, stewardship in the city and also in turn create green collar jobs because everybody that's installing that solar, everyone that's doing the swaps of the light bulbs, everyone that's doing that water conservation or weatherization has got a job because of the financing of this program. So we want to encourage people to learn more. Again, call us at 311 to learn how you can participate or watch it on Monday night as we have this online and interactive town hall. Hope you all have a good weekend and uh, look forward to being back next week with next week's updates on what's going on in the city and county of San Francisco, signing off from West Portal, the beautiful playground, and Rec Center. We'll see you next week.